Hello and welcome! Today we will be showing you these Viviva Colors Inktober 2021 postcards plus the new Viviva watercolor pans. We'll be trying these out, seeing what we like about them. Also, this little water brush that came with the set. I am going to be lazy and not put water in it because I actually have my water right here, so it won't be a full review of this water brush, but I'll use the tip. We'll see what it's like. So let's get through these postcards. If you missed where I received these, I'll link that video up in the corner for you. And that was quite a story. <laughs> I'll just say that, I'll just say that. Check out the video, whatever. So let's go through these postcards in a little bit more detail. They come with this cover here and they start with day one. So this is a collaboration of several artists. So there are some main artists that participated in this. So there are not 31 different artists here. So what I will do is I will separate these by artists, even though it will mess up the days, but that's okay. You have the Inktober list that I will link in the description box or put a picture on the screen for you. You can see what day is what prompt. All right, we have six different artists with these postcards. We have my favorite, Kat Falk. This is Marie, she's from Sweden says she's a Swedish artist who couldn't decide which she loves more, art or cats, so she decided to draw lots and lots of cats. Her unique gift is giving a human quality to the animals she paints. We have day one, crystal, sour, day 11, so cute. Compass, day 16, fuzzy, which is day 21, isn't that adorable? And patch, day 29. Next, we have Derek. He is my second favorite artist in this postcard group. So fun. He's a professional artist from Canada who has designed for Marvel, DC Comics, Warner Brothers, and Disney, among others. He recently launched his own graphic novel miniseries called Ruin Ruled, and I think I would really like his art, so I need to go check him out. Suit, day two. Fan, day seven. Isn't that great? That's so darn cute. Helmet, day 15. Splat, day 17. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Collide, day 25. And that is it for Derek. All right, this is the artist that I am the least, oh, what do you call it, compatible with. Not very interested in this art. However, good artist, probably, and just not my thing. Vessel, day three. Spirit, day six. Like, pretty amazing art, really. It's just, it's not an interest of mine. Loop, day 19. Open, day 22. Ah, connect. See, I don't get this one at all. I don't even know what I'm looking at. Day 26, that's okay, that's okay. I don't have to understand everyone's art. Next, we have, oh wait, did I even read who this was? I don't think so. This is Xavier. Xavier is an illustrator and elementary teacher from Florida who loves exploring natural history within the context of scripture. He enjoys work that unites his passions for flora, fauna, and faith. Next, we have this artist. Michelle is an art-obsessed psychologist from Germany who loves her plants so much she gives them human names. She usually makes art with minimal color but encourages you to go crazy with your colors. This is not day four. Very cool. Pressure, day nine. Moon, day 18. Sprout day 20, and Spark, day 27. Interesting. Not my thing also, but a little more my thing than, than Xavier, but there you go, okay. Let's look at this one. This is Jana, is an artist mom from Finland who creates mystical creatures from a fantasy world. She is surrounded by pristine nature and animals, which she adores and draws endless inspiration from them. Okay, Raven, day five. Pick, day 10. Roof, day 13. Extinct, day 24. And Slither, day 30. Yeah, not very interesting to me. That's okay. Good artist, just not my thing. Here we are. Last artist is Jake Parker, NYT best-selling illustrator who started Inktober in 2009 as a personal challenge. He's passionate about helping complete art beginners experience Inktober and the joy of art. So he obviously has this little character because this little character is a theme in all of his prompts this year. This is Watch, day six. Stuck, day 21. Tick, 
Day 14. I would not want to encounter that tick. No, thank you. Leek, day 23. And Crispy, day 28. Is that it? Or is there one more? Yep, he's got the last one too. Risk, day 31. All right, now these postcards are supposed to be on premium watercolor paper. This feels like Bristol paper to me. Completely feels like Bristol paper. So let's paint one of these and see what we think. And they're all out of order now. Yay me. Okay, great. Here we go. Let's use the water brush that came with it and these watercolor pans. But before we do that, let's see what these colors look like. We have 16 colors here, so they're Sheet set also has 16 colors. I'm not going to swatch these right now because I don't want to. 16 colors. Oh, we could just do it on this instead of the Etcher sketchbook. So anyway, this is kind of like watercolor paper-ish. And this other side, though, is really slick. And it says, mix amazing colors here. So you could probably use that as a mixing surface. Maybe that too, but it feels a little bit more. Oh, I don't know. Okay, well, forget the Etcher sketchbook. We will use paper it came with to see what we think. So apparently these are the color names. It looks like they're hopefully in order. Scarlet. Wow. Okay, that really seems vibrant already and re-wet really quickly. Here's Scarlet. Amaranth. Yeah, love how they re-wet. Wow, I just went off the reservoir there. That's all right. Orange Blossom. Seems super nice. Mango. Lots of flow. That's kind of cool. This paper is, eh, whatever. Not awesome. So I should probably do this in my Edger sketchbook still anyway, but that's all right. This will give us a good idea of the colors. This is deep yellow. Yeah, they flow really nicely. It's pretty cool. Raw Sienna. Rust, I like that name. Give me a rusty old car to paint any day of the week, right? Yeah, that could be a fun color. So their flow and their bleed actually kind of remind me a little bit of core paints. I'd have to do a bigger bleed test to know that for sure, but it's kind of interesting. Burnt Umber. Yeah, this paper is just, it's slick. So we won't be able to tell a whole lot. Apple Green. Part of it's the paper. Next is deep green. Deep green doesn't seem to re-wet quite as easily. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. Okay. Vine green. Yep, this one's having a bit of a challenge getting some pigment up as well. So two of them, kind of challenging. Still looks good. Shallow blue. It's a good name. Oh, pretty. Royal blue. Ah, oh, gorgeous. Not a blue that I use all the time, but I do love those two blues. Deep blue. Let's see if this is more like an ultramarine or what do we have here? Oh, it got on my white. I'll have to clean that up. Hmm. Nope. Not an ultramarine or an indigo. Interesting. Before we get too far along, let me grab a Sharpie. We'll put a nice black line in here. White's kind of pointless. You can't see how it covers over things. And we'll do this violet while that Sharpie is drying. Ooh, pretty. And the white. Make sure we get a good pigment load on the brush. Giving it a fair chance here. Oh, 
And there's the white. I'll show that to you a little bit more closely here. Hang on. So here's all the colors and the white. So let's see what these postcards are like. All right, so I know it's October 8th when you're watching this, but for me, it is September 28th. <laughs> Since I was leaving town for 11 days, I had to film this in advance. Here is Crystal, day one. So let's grab our color chart and see, I don't know, see what colors we want here. So the only yellow we have here is a deep yellow, which is fine. Oh, painting on this surface isn't horrible. It's it's slick. The paint is dealing with it though pretty well. And the way this paint kind of spreads into its neighbor is working really well for this. I like it. I like it a lot. Oops, dipped into the wrong color. That's okay. Oh no. Okay, paper does not lift at all. And it pulled the color right off of the my paper towel, which I should have anticipated. Even though that color is decades old, pulled it right off onto there. But that's okay because, you know, it's near the crystal color anyway, so I guess that's going to work out just fine. Yes, yes it will. That is the wrong one. It is not purple. Pur ah, I did it again. Purple's down here. It's very interesting. This paint acts kind of like ink. Well, I mean, that's probably par for the course for what it is. <laughs> but I really like it. Dip my hand in it because I'm good at that. Pardon me. Like clean up. All right. What was I doing? Yellow? Yellow. I have a yellow crystal, right? I am not waiting for anything to dry. It's not bleeding too badly between the two. A little bit, you know, when it's super wet, but not bad. Interesting. I thought it would be kind of miserable to paint on this paper, but the mixture of this paint and paper is just working. It's working out just fine. Oh, I think I want to do a background, which could be dangerous. Well, still don't believe this is premium watercolor paper, but it's enjoyable to work on. So that's a bonus. I think we can call that a win. And I want these postcards specifically to use with my Himi Mia Use It Up watercolor challenge, which is, if you're new, is where we are trying to see how long it takes to use up an entire palette of watercolor paint. And we have done, I don't know, at this point, 28 paintings or something, and a lot of hours of work and a huge amount of square inches of painting and we still have a long ways to go before we use up our paint. So I got these postcards thinking that it would be a fun thing to use the paints on and see how much more paint we could use up with all of this. So if you've missed that, there is a use it up water or how, I don't know, the playlist that I'll link up in the corner for you, whatever I named it because I can't remember at the moment and you can check that out. And I dip my hand in it again. Hey, so you might want to put it out of your hand's reach. I'll let that completely dry and show you what that looks like at the end. All dry now. Here is the warping. <laughs> not surprising. It's very, well, it's not very thin paper, but it's pretty thin paper. But completely dried, it is warped. Uh, I thought it was completely dried. I have a wet spot right there that isn't drying. That's all right. And these. So what is my conclusion? I don't know. I've already told you, I think. This paint works good on this paper. I will continue to try this paper with other paint. Ta-da, all these other postcards. So what I have done is I have dug out the first 10 days, well, Aside from day one, because it's done already. I have dug out the next days. For the days I'm going to be gone, I will bring my Himi Mia paints with me. Use them on this every day while I'm gone. And maybe post those, because my actual Inktober sketches and paintings won't be done. Dang it. Subscribe if you want to see how that goes. Hit the like button. 
helps my channel out, helps me out personally because it gives me happy feelings when you guys hit the like button and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Hello and him <clears throat> stay <laughs> that have participated here. And when I went through them last week, last week, that was yesterday. That was yesterday. Okay, brain, great. NYT, best-selling illustrator, <laughs> I can't talk.